Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I've got this 8-bit Do SM30 Pro Bluetooth gamepad and today I'm going to be showing you how to unbox this and set this up with a MacBook. So I've got my MacBook Pro 16-inch with the M1 Max chip and we're going to be doing some retro gaming today with this device. So basically I bought a couple of these to do a bit of retro gaming and cooperative gaming as well. So I've got this controller just for this purpose. And uh, what I like about these controllers is that they are not just compatible with the Mac operating system, but you can also use them on, say, Apple TVs and also switches as well. There are multiple pairing modes that you can make use of. So it's going to show you how this works. So basically, one of the big advantages is that we have the ability to use the switch. We have the D input, which is direct input, X input, which is kind of emulating an Xbox controller, and also Mac OS as well. So that will allow us to use this on a Mac operating system and also on the Apple TV and iPad and iPhone as well. So it's a very versatile controller. Uh, so anyway, I'm just gonna take off some of these bits of stickers and uh, just show you how this works. Um, there's not much included in the box itself. There are a few instructions on the actual control layout. We have specific instructions for how to install and pair on all of these different devices. We even have Android input as well. We have the ability to pair as a wired connection and also the turbo function too. We also have the same instructions in Chinese and uh, we have a USB-A to USB-C charging cable or data cable as well. And so we can use this to actually pair this up. This one has actually been branded 8-bit dough, which is very cool. So what I'm gonna do now is to show you how to pair it to the Mac operating system. So the first thing we need to do is to go to the top left-hand side of the screen and then go to System Preferences. Then I'm gonna press the Bluetooth button here. And this is gonna be basically watching out for any Bluetooth device that pops up. And then basically we're gonna be following the instructions here. So the Mac operating system, basically we press the A and start button in order to turn on the controller. And then we press the pair button for three seconds. Then it's gonna appear on the Bluetooth menu. So here we're going to press the start button and the A button. And this is gonna turn on the controller. So I'm gonna press these two buttons now. And you can see at the bottom here in the kind of faint green light that this is now pulsing. And then we need to press the pair button, which is the small button here. So if the controller has already been paired, you can press the pair button here to kind of reset the pairing. But I can see already on the screen, we have a DualShock 4 wireless controller listed. And this is how the device will appear for the macOS operating system. So I'm gonna press the connect button. I can feel a little vibration there. It's showing that it's completely connected. So here on the actual bottom LED, we can see the first green light is on, which indicates that it's fully paired. So if you go to the website gamepadtester.com, what we can do is just double check that this controller is paired. I press the button and it's showing as a DualShock 4 controller. When I experiment with the actual keys, this is all working correctly. I can feel the L1, R1 buttons all there. Start select, it's all correct. I can feel that all of these buttons are all quite responsive. I'm just gonna try it out with a game. So here I'm gonna be using OpenMU, which is a multi-platform emulator. I'm gonna be running Super Mario World. Here I'm just gonna check the controls. I'm gonna to go to my preferences, go to controls, and just make sure that SNES is selected. I'm gonna change the input from keyboard to Sony PS4 DualShock 4 wireless controller so that this is all connected up. And I'm just gonna load up this game. So if you're interested in learning how to get OpenMU working, I have a tutorial on how to do this. I'll leave a link to this in the description. I've got tutorials about how to get loads of other games and systems working on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and continue setting this up so I can actually see and play this game and see how responsive it is. This is a Super Nintendo game and this controller feels exactly like a Super Nintendo controller. And I'm just gonna play a little bit just to see how it runs. And it feels very responsive. It feels exactly like how I remember. Even though I've never used this controller before, it has this kind of very familiar feeling. And I think this is running great. It feels responsive and it's the OpenMU configuration uh, allows us to play this game perfectly well. I'm just gonna quit out of this and try a different game. So I've got the 8-bit do paired to the Mac running system at the moment, but let's say I wanna connect it up to my phone. So what I can do is to basically press the sync button again, and we just hold it down for a few seconds and then it's no longer connected to the Mac operating system and this green light is kind of flashing a little bit. And basically what we'll do is we'll go to the settings menu on the phone and I'm going to go to Bluetooth. And what I'm going to do is to pair it using the DualShock 4 wireless controller, which this detected this as. 
and now that is connected. So basically now I've paired the controller to my phone and we're now playing Ocean Horn 2, which is an Apple Arcade game. And this is the one that's making use of the kind of dual analog sticks. And this does feel very nice and responsive. It does feel like a good experience. So this is all perfectly playable and it feels very good. So anyway, that's an introduction on how to pair the 8-bit Do controller to the Mac operating system as well as the iPhone. Anyway, I hope you did find this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. I've got lots of other tutorial videos on my channel. If you found this useful, please leave a comment and I'll see you in the next video.